little peeps. I'm having such a good day today. <laughs> but I'm also, uh, and I was so cocky earlier when I was getting this all set up about how uh, how I was nailing the technology. <laughs> and in the process, um, sort of jinxed myself. There we go. All I did was I did not refresh my screen. Look at that. I, I figured it out myself. So I'm still going to take this as a win in the old technology category. Because... Uh, Oh, the stuff I'm figuring stuff out sometimes intentionally, sometimes I just happen upon things. Um, but oh my goodness, it is so, so nice to be like getting a handle on it. Oh, so let's see, look at that 701. Oh, there's also the added bonus that my back feels so much better today than it did. Even yesterday, I was in a lot of pain. And uh, I feel so much better today. Um, I'm going to wait and see if anybody else is popping on here. I have, uh, in the whole technology realm, just happened to figure out that you can post, like make something in Canva and post it directly to Facebook from Canva. So you don't have to like save it and then go out and go into Facebook and start a post and then upload it. It was awesome. <laughs> it was just like a, woo, my God, I could. Anyway, um, yeah, I switched the cameras around. I don't know if you noticed. And I realize now that everything looks different. It looks different live in Facebook and in Zoom than it does just on my screen because my, my head's on the other side of the screen now. And but I have a clearer camera there if you all notice, because you know you want to see all of this in you know HD. <laughs> um my other my camera on my laptop just doesn't seem to be doing very well. So my other camera that I had that was working overhead, it was had a really horrible microphone in it, but it was an HD camera is now the HD camera well as the iPad is the really good camera with the microphone and you know, that's how technology goes. All wins. And it was parent teacher day today. <laughs> I honestly hate those things. Um, I think teachers do too, honestly. Uh, but I, uh, all good reviews. They told me America was a good kid and smart and respectful and was trying and asked questions when he needs to, which apparently is not a common thing in junior high. Um, so it was just, oh, it was so nice to, yes, he's late in the morning. And yes, he still has the odd assignment that he doesn't do on time because no kid is perfect. But um, just to know that some of those big things like respectful and polite in class and and uh, the one teacher said he's definitely a leader. And oh, I was just like, well, my heart's happy. So and then I got to play. So the other day when I couldn't do anything because my back hurt too much and I could not sit in my chair, I could not sit at my desk in this chair. I was sitting in the soft chair in the living room. I came up with tonight's agenda <laughs> and I thought, you know, I'm gonna, one of these days I'm going to show somebody what tonight's agenda looks like. So there you go. This is what I do. I draw pictures and then I see if I can actually make it all happen. So I was having a busy day and uh, I got everything ready, but I didn't actually do any of the things like finish anything. <laughs> So, oh, I just gave up. I just gave up the secret. I wasn't paying attention. So we're, we're going to be winging it a fair bit tonight. But hey, I think that I might be at my best when I wing it. So I'm just going to go with it. I wanted to know if anybody had figured out my clue of what we were doing tonight. Because I posted this in the newsletter, which if you are not getting the newsletter, you should. Because it's just, you know, full of information, including the best sale. I've been a demonstrator for 10 years. And I don't remember the kit ever being discounted before. Like the, the starter kit is an awesome deal. Like you get you get hundreds of dollars worth of stuff for $135 flat rate. And the little part of me that just loves the fact that you do not pay any tax and you don't pay any GST. So it's like $135 flat rate. Uh, well, that's that kit is on sale. So you get all the same stuff, but instead of paying $135 flat rate, you pay $100 flat rate. So $100 flat rate gets you $165 of the product of your choosing. They throw in a paper pumpkin kit, at least in North America, thank you, uh, which is a $31.50 value. They throw in a bunch of catalogs and some other supplies. Uh, like I said, no GST, no shipping, 100 bucks flat, boom. So that is awesome. And I'm going to do a bit more about how you can figure out what to pick and some stuff like that uh, throughout the weekend. I'll be adding some videos. But, but anyways, I... Um, 
I put all the good news like that. We just found out on Tuesday they were doing that. So that was in Wednesday's newsletter. And anyways, I did put this. Is, that's where I originally posted this picture. And now I have connected the dots. <laughs> but if you look, the entire face was drawn. So it wasn't, I, I saw this picture. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's a pretty good uh, giveaway as to what that connected dots picture is. But it made me laugh anyways. But then if I hadn't shown you that other piece of paper, it might've been a harder, a harder challenge. But, but then the question was, is there such a technique called raccooning? <laughs> Probably not. No, what we're doing tonight is masking. But this is what I thought, I, I, I need a picture for masking. The first thing I thought was the raccoon in his little, his little uh, robber mask. So that's why I picked a raccoon in case you were all trying to figure out that train of thought. Um, oops, sticking, sticking my stuff together. Uh, let's see, I have so much stuff prepped and in piles on my desk, it's ridiculous. Plus, I have, you can just sort of see it just peeking out over here. Um, <clears throat> I love this greenery, and I fought with this greenery. This is what was what left over when I was making this, this gorgeous card, which is too far for me to reach. And I just, I love the look of this greenery. So when I had all the, like, cast-offs left on my desk, I can't move it because I just like the it So I have just, I mean, there is stuff. I got six projects on the go. All right. So... I'm also going to show you because squirrel. Oh, can't show you that. Top secret. We're doing a, a sampler swap with my demonstrator group. And uh, very excited. Well, we haven't tried that one before. But so everybody has to send us squares. But look at this gorgeous card I got today. This is from Maryland. And the squares are inside of it. But is this card not gorgeous? Oh my goodness, Marilyn, you did awesome. I love this card. And then yes, the squares that are inside of it are beautiful too. But this, there's no white in here. Like it's rare to see a card that doesn't have white or cream in it or something. Absolutely gorgeous card. All right, I'm gonna start paying attention again. Masking. So basically masking is, you know, hiding part of something or blocking part of something. So there are many, many ways you could use masking and stamping. I'm gonna show you from the very most basic one and uh, Hopefully it won't be seven hours later when we get to a little fancier one. I'm hoping to keep these down to like less than an hour. Oh, hello. Hello, Tamara. Um, isn't that, that card gorgeous? I, I opened that today. I wasn't even sure what I was going to get in that. I, I, I was like, oh, I got happy mail. The squares fell out, which made me realize what was going on. But oh my God, I love that card. All righty. Did you, Tamara, did you figure out from the picture what we were doing tonight? <laughs> what technique we were doing? Okay, I have to wait. I have to try to slow down a little bit. Um, because, nope, okay. This was the picture. Because the things, the things are offset, right? Like there's a, too much of a delay. So, so this was the picture to give the hint. I, I connected the dots. The original picture didn't have the dots connected to see what we were doing. That was my whole, we're doing masking. Okay, so very basic, basic masking that you might want to do. And I will show you, um, I, I, I don't know, I must have done this three or four times the wrong way before I finally, uh, I know, me too. I might do that with pencil crayons later. I might just color that, that little raccoon. I think it's, it was meant for kindergarten because it was like super simple. And the, at the top of the page, it had a word scramble if, it, if you needed help figuring out what it was. And I mean, how many letters are in raccoon? Like there's what, two C's, two O's. So the little word scramble at the top was also very easy to figure out, but, but that might be just about my level. Anyway, so here we go, back to, back to Tracy trying to stay on point. I love this step. It says, hope your day is fantabulistic. And then underneath it says, fabulous and fantastic all in one. And as I try to explain to my son numerous times, if you're going to make a joke or a clever quip, don't explain it, just say it and then stop. Because if it's good, it'll live on its own. So I love the step as long as it ends at fantabulistic. I don't like the explanation underneath. <laughs> so here's the perfect scenario. For masking. Now, what you can do is with a marker. Oh, and you know what? This is a like total fluke, but okay. So these are the Stampin' markers, and these are Stampin' blends. Stampin' blends are alcohol based. Do not use your Stampin' blends to write on your stamps because it doesn't work. But if you want to color a, a, a gem a different color or do some other stuff, blends are the way to go. The marker, on the other hand, don't color your gems with it because it'll just wipe off. But for stamps, absolutely. So what you can do, and I'm gonna to try to do this without it right in front of me, so let's see how that goes. So what you can do is you can take these little, 
your little marker. And I'm just, I'm using the brush end to the bigger end just because it's faster. And I'm kind of going on the side of it. And yes, sound effects. I don't know why, but they're essential. Okay, so I'm, I've colored this in and I can, I can basically see where the shine is. So when I stamp down with it, I get, get my iPad in the way. I do get just that, right? Let's see if I can, oh, I now gotta hold it steady. That is easy to see. So here's the thing, the markers work great. And if you were gonna do this and you wanted to do it right, get out your stamp apparatus. Because I, I find with the markers that it's not always a solid color. It's a little bit modeled. So if you use your stamp apparatus, you could do that and then you could color it again and do it again and do it as many times as you needed to to get it exactly right. But when it comes to something this small, I will be honest, I would never get my stamp apparatus out to do it. Um, yeah, always sound effects, yes. So for something like this, I have found that all you need to do, and I did uh, Sticky's greatest invention, like, oh my God, Sticky's, whoever did those, that man's a genius. That woman's a genius. I don't actually know who invented Sticky's. But in this case, I also use scotch tape. So what I have found out is you can also do this. So the part of the stamp, and I, and I will put it down and I will show you because I can't, I can't, I have to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you see how I just put the tape over top of the letters? There, I masked off those letters. Now, this is not the cleanest way to do it. Um, I'll show you a different way to do it too, but this is the way that I've actually found <clears throat> when I want a big, like a deep clear stamp, but only part of the stamp, I found this is the better way to do it. But I'm going to show you what I, seriously, I must have done it a few times. So, because now you can ink it up in your stamp pad and you can get like really good coverage. So, here's the part to remember do not put it in your ink pad and then put it on your paper like you think. Because look what you'll do because the tape is covered in ink. Yes, at least three times. Now, I do not know. I can tell really obviously in front of me. Oops. If you can see now, no, don't look at the tape part. It's a little bit modeled because you're not intended to tape on scotch tape. But if you can see how much clearer and more solid the second image is to the first, right? So that's what we're going for. So I'm going to make this little label, label, which will show up on a future card. So here's the trick. What you have to do is put it in there and then take the tape off. And then, sorry, you can put my hands away. Stamp. Ta-da, and look at that. I, I am so fluky sometimes because I'm gonna put that in there before I, I'm sticking it to a piece of paper in the garbage before I get ink all over my fingers. So there we go. So now I have oops, just the part that I want. And now this I love, hope your day is fantabulistic. And I do hope your day is fantabulistic. So super basic. Now the other way you could do it, oh, here, I'm gonna show you the second way you could do it. If you want, you can try, and I only took one label out. This is how I started trying to do it. We'll pretend I have a piece of cardstock. We won't pretend I have a piece of cardstock. I'll actually take a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna put this down like this, and we'll, just, we'll see how fluky I am. So this is how I used to try to do it. I would mask it off, and then I would try to go, okay, Oops, that's totally not in the right spot. Let's put this down here. Just on the off chance that this actually works. <laughs> Let's put it somewhere better. Okay, so I would put this down. And I would ink this thing up. And then I would try to imagine where that little F drops down, but the other one is over. And I would stamp like this. And you see, this is more often than not, this is how it happened. So this is what happened. You see, I was totally wrong. <laughs> so in, in, some, in some cases, if it's a perfect straight line, you might be better, especially if it's a C, uh, like a photopolymer stamp, you might be able to do it to put something like a piece of down. Yeah. Super, super fancy tool there, dollar, you know, a roll at the dollar store and boom, problem solved. So anyways, that is like some super basic masking, but that is nonetheless masking. You masked off the part you didn't want and you kept the part you did. And that really is, in all these techniques I'm gonna show you, you are either masking off the part you don't want or masking off the part you do want. Like it's one or the other. Now, I'm, I'm going to try to clean as I go and not have ink everywhere when I'm done that I can then stick my hand in. All right, let's let's consult the uh, 
let's consult the agenda again to see where I was at. Okay, so one of the other big reasons that you would do masking, okay, now I've done that and I've knocked it, I've bent it and that won't stand up and be my cheek cheek for me. And the reason I have to do this is because I have these in a certain order for a reason so that I don't have to backtrack as much. So it's with any luck less painful for you guys. So, see I have little demos and samples. So a lot of time what you're trying to do with masking is make it so that you can stamp multiple images and get the, the depth of field that you want. So you want something in the foreground with things in the background, which if you were to just, I'm so, I'm so cho um, like chuffed with how well that label turned out, but I wanna make sure I don't screw it up. There we go. Sorry, lost my staff there for a moment. So I'm probably gonna go through more than one piece of paper. By the time I'm done here, I keep, I keep using samples in front of me. Okay, so if I want this cabin, which I love this stamp. And behind it, I want trees. Now I realize this is exaggerated for, for you know demonstration purposes, but this doesn't really work to stamp the tree. And actually that did not turn out nearly as bad as I thought it would. Um, but yeah, I just stamped the trees over top of the cabin. So now I've muddled up the cabin. What I want is the trees to look like they're behind it, but the cabin was built in front of it. So this is what we're going to do with masking. Now, there we go. If I had stamped my cabin, and I'm going to show you why we're using scrap paper for it too. So if I stamp my cabin, and I put, I, I stepped another cabin, I did this ahead of time just so you didn't have to watch me cut. Um, <clears throat> this is on cardstock, right? So regular, thick, regular cardstock. So if I put this over top, of that because I don't want the trees on top of my cabin now. And I stamp down with the regular cardstock because it is thicker. You got quite the void. So you see all along the edges here, there's a big gap now. And that's because the cardstock is too thick. So the stamp has no chance of hitting there. When you get a little farther away from the edge of the cardstock, it will hit, but it won't hit right next to your original image. So when I was thinking about this, and I'm like, I'm going to demo that so people understand why we're using just like pieces of scrap paper or the ever popular stickies. But then it occurred to me, what if you wanted that void? I don't know if that's the right, I should have picked a better stamp, but I'm going to try it anyways. Um, what if you wanted that void? Like what if you purposely stamped so that you could get a circle around? You know, I think that's worth pursuing. I'm going to try that. I realize now that you can't see it well enough on this paper to see, but it kind of does work. If you wanted to stamp something and have like a perfect white frame around it, then you could, instead of making like a nice like proper mask, you actually could put your, like cut it out of cardstock or even just like stamp something and put like a, a die cut because then it would give you that perfect frame around what you were doing. We're trying, I'll try that later. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. So I'm going to make this, and because I haven't actually decided on what the final card is gonna look like yet, I'm gonna do it on the layer. But I thought about it and I thought this is a perfect to put on a note card. These note cards are slick. They're quick to put together. They're cheap to get, you get 20 of them, pre-cut, pre-scored with envelopes, single layer, boom, simple cards. So if you wanted to do something like that, you wanna be able to, uh, to make them nice and simple. I think I'm gonna at least wanna tie like a little bit of twine around or I might just pop it up. Um, I struggle with simple. <laughs> so we're gonna do it this way. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp my, my cabin down. And then I'm going to use my mask. Now I did the same thing as I did with the cardstock. I cut it out of, or I stamped it and I cut it out of a piece of sticky. So there's, a, there's only a little bit of sticky on the top here but I, I stamped it and cut it out of sticky. I try to just ink the sentiment I want. Oh, see, I missed that and now I gotta go back. My brain's not going back. Yeah, yes, going back to the comments, sorry. It's much easier to just ink what you want than to ink what you don't. Okay, so this is thinner paper. So this is gonna work much better. She's laughing at me. <laughs> okay, I'll get better at the comments. I really do. Once I get going, I'm in my own little zone and I just say, 
I like to talk to people in person because <laughs> then I then I don't forget to look at them, I guess. Okay, so I've just stuck this over top. And, and you'll notice in this one, because I know that the trees are only going to be on the other sides of it. I didn't bother fussy cutting on the bottom of that because it really doesn't matter. I want my trees to go beside. So now I'm going to, oops, I'm going to pay attention to where I'm stamping. I'm going to stamp my trees. And I got a much closer, oops, this is, <laughs> I'm trying to get the angle. I've noticed it's shiny. I, I, uh, I think I needed to push harder on that side because I didn't get it. Because you notice on this side how the trees are right up against the edge. Sorry, my big mug, muggy hand in the way there. That's what it's supposed to look like. So now you have depth, right? Cabins in the foreground, trees are in the background. And I didn't muddle up. Where did I do the other one? I didn't muddle up the cabin like I did in this one. Like this is just so much clearer and nicer than what we were going for. So now I'm going to mount that on my little note card and put a sentiment, and do something else with it. So there's there's one reason for masking, right? And this is the trick, thin paper. Now you could use, you could just stamp on this, cut this out and use this. You can use photocopy paper. Um, yeah, I have various different sizes and shapes of stickies, whatever works. So there is one reason that you are trying to stamp multiple images and not stamp over top of another one. Here's another one. <laughs> this is one of my absolute favorite sets. Um, I want some chickens. I want chickens having a party. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. And I and I do because we have a stamp that says, be who you were born to be. I absolutely love this sentiment. And I think everybody should just be who they were born to be. Just be you. So this, this chicken I am going to highlight and I'm going to color in. <laughs> magic, woo, magic. Um, I'm gonna color him in. So what I did is I stamped him first. And then I covered him up. Oops, I got a little piece of sticky on there. I covered him up. And then I stamped more. But I want to have a whole crowd of chickens. So this chicken is standing out in the middle of a whole crowd of chickens. So in the end, I ended up stamping more than one chicken. Right? So then I I stamped the so those two chickens I stamped on, and then I covered them up. Then I stamped those two chickens. Now I want to stamp one, at least one more chicken here, and then I think I'm going to put a couple down there. So I don't know why I took the middle one out first. So now I want to add more chicken. So I'm going to cover these ones up now because they're the ones I'm stamping closest to. I, I'm not worried about, about uh, stamping on that one because I'm not stamping down there yet. Right now I'm still putting more up here to fill in the background because my little sentiment is going to be maybe not that big now that I look at that circle, but it's going to be down here. And, and I have, uh, I guess I tend to over die cut when I do. I started making cards. I have this many <laughs> little bits of chickens and various things. And so this other card is probably going to end up with a corn stalk or a fence or a, they might even end up with a happy birthday. One never knows. But one of these things is going to be down in the corner. So I'm not too worried about the bottom. I'm not stamping too much down there. Oops, I just knocked chickens everywhere. There we go. Move that out of the way. But I do want to stamp one here. Now, you notice that between those two chickens, there's a bit of a gap. So I don't, I want to fill that gap in. I don't want to have a, like a white circle there. But at the same time, I don't, I, I also have these other guys. So I don't have to completely line this up over a chicken. I just have to make sure that the part I want to keep is protected. So look at that. I'm just going to do that for now because it works just fine. Because all I'm doing is covering up the part I do not want <laughs> to stamp over top of. And but I want to leave that little hole open. So I can just put that at an angle. Okay. I'm making sure I'm using the right color. So now I've got those chickens down. So I'm going to stamp another chicken in the middle. And then I should be able to get one over here. And I'll go up here and stamp another one. These ones are just kind of a little bit off. Because <laughs> in every crowd, there's a few chickens that are just a little bit off. And then I'm going to stamp one more layer in the middle. So I'm going to go back up now and I'm going to do this. So I guess depending on what you're doing and how big they're, it would depend how many masks you need. But in this case, I figured I would make do with three and three seems to be working. There we go. 
Okay, so I thought I could do it this way, but it's I realize I'm, I'm probably not going to. So I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to do the same thing again. I'll just temporarily use this guy to cover that little hole. Damn him. And then, and like I said, all you're doing is you're covering up the chickens that you don't want to stamp over top of. This one, and then we'll move this one over and then we're down to our last chicken. I think that's a big enough crowd. And I don't want, I, I like things a little bit off. So I like things that run off the page. I like things that peek out from underneath the page. I just realized there's a whole big chunk there. So here's, here's the next fancy mask, because that happens to be the sticky that's on my desk. So I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> so there, I've, I've masked off with a less fancy mask because there's one little piece that's sticking out. There we go. Well, so yeah, I like things to be a little, a little askew. Now here's the thing. I'm going to keep these chickens and I'm going to put them in with the rest of my chicken stuff because I can keep using those and keep using those. The sticky on the back is not super sticky anymore. It's not as sticky as it started out to be, uh, but it's sticky enough that it'll still hold. And really you're, when you're doing the masking, you're just stamping down and picking it right back up again. So it's not like you are, um, um, moving the stamp around a lot or doing it multiple times or anything. So even if there's no sticky on the back of your mask, it's still going to work. Okay, so I'm making my chicken. I'm trying to, I'm trying to speed color. I don't know how much you want to watch the color. Oh, Jen in the house. Hello, Jen. There we go. So yeah, so now I, I did use two different inks. That was my that was my big trick. Um, I stamped my my chicken that has the most attention is stamped in black ink just to stand out even more. And then I just stamped the rest of the crowd in smoky slate. But I also was only planning to color hit the chicken that we're talking about, right? So we do that, and then like I said, I'll be I'll be finding a, a slightly smaller circle. Sorry, I just realized they're off screen a slightly smaller circle, but it's going to say, be who you were born to be. And then I'll put a little bit of die cuts because if you know me, you know, I like to do that, my die cuts. So there you go. There's another masking technique for you for getting multiple images. And I guess just to give you an idea, because what did I do with my little paper? Where's my other one that I screwed up on already? I'll go like this. Um, and you guys can probably imagine this, but just to give you the idea, here's what happens if you don't mask a group of chickens, <laughs> right? You're just stamping over top of each other and that's not really what you're going for. That would be the, uh, the uh, 60s, <laughs> I took something and now I'm seeing multiple chickens party. That's not the card we're looking for. This is so much better and so much cuter and it's chickens. So there we go, multiple items. Now, the one thing I noticed a lot of times is if you're masking, oh, hello, Mary. Look at this, we've got all sorts of peeps in the house tonight. Um, if you're masking, you tend to be sponging or brushing. So I'm not sure why, but it just works that way. So what did I do with them? There we go. Sorry, I momentarily lost lost my, uh, my little pile of stuff that I needed. So I have not tried this card yet. I've seen one somewhere, something like this. I'm not even sure what the entire card was. Um, I see it in my head and I'm like, oh, one day I'm gonna go back and try that, but I don't save the picture or anything. So here I am weeks later thinking, I can do this live, come on. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of times with masking, you were either um, covering what you wanna keep or masking off what, what you don't. So I'm going to do both in one card. So this is from, well, I need a bunch of things out of the way. This is partially the Arctic Bear stamp set. That love me a good polar bear with, let's just call them the Arctic Bears dies because I don't actually know what they're called, the dies that go with them. So what I did is I took this tiny little, I'm assuming moon, and the biggest of the polar bear dies, and I pre-cut them just so you don't have to watch me with my big shot or my die cut machine. So there we go, I cut the polar bear out and this is just notebook paper, right? So it's the same thin paper we were going for. 
Now I have no idea what I'm going to do with this bear, but this bear is going to end up somewhere, you know, doing something. It will serve a purpose at some point. What I want to do is I want to stamp just in the bear. I'm going to make this bear awesome. Um, it is, it, it's sort of, not that I would ever claim to be nearly as good. Uh, I'm, I don't even call myself an artist, but indigenous artists make some of the most amazing stuff. Um, and that's what I think of with this, of, of lots of nature shapes. So this bear is going to be the star of this card. And all the color is going to be contained in this bear. And then the rest of the card is going to be very basic. So, and I'm just making this as a layer, because again, I don't know how I'm going to finish everything or how it's all going to work out. But So I'm going to put my first mask down like this. So this is this, the technique here is, or the reasoning here, is I wanna keep all of the rest of the card white. So I'm masking off all of the rest of the card and leaving just this opening. And one of the things that will make this job go a lot easier is tape. So in this case, I'm using washi tape because, I wanna put that in the center. I was gonna say my other tip for you is don't get chintzy on the, on the masking paper. You will regret it if you make this big fancy card and you're masking like this, and then then you either aren't paying attention or you get all excited because your card's so nice, and you go sideways and you go off and onto the side of your card. So if at all possible, make sure your mask covers the whole card. I still haven't caved and bought the polar bears. How much do you want that it carries over? Yes. Well, you know what? When I bought this set, I bought it for the icicles. Sorry, scroll moment. We'll get back to masking. I totally bought this set for these icicles. Now I haven't actually used the icicles yet. I have used the bears and maybe it's, you know, because of my past career, but um, I wanted I wanted to see if I could use them as black bears. And a polar bear has a totally different shaped head than a black bear or a grizzly bear. I can tell the difference by the shape of their head and these do not. <laughs> but this one was the closest one and I'm like, okay, I can use that and I can use this little die to simulate a black bear. But the other ones are very much polar bears. So, I, I am using the polar bear um, card for my brother's birthday card because he's in the army and had just recently done an exercise up in Resolute. Uh, you know, I'm gonna offset this. He just did um, an exercise up in Resolute and got to see the polar bears. He sent home pictures of him with the polar bears watching him play. So that, that opportunity does not come very often. So yes, absolutely making his card have polar bears on it. Um, but I will find reasons to use the polar bears because since I bought them now, I feel like I have to. Okay, so uh, you could use scotch tape for this. I'm using this because I'm putting it on my cardstock. And I'm just doing that because I know me. I will knock this thing seven times and I will do all sorts of stuff with it. And uh, it will never stay in place. I'm choosing not to stick the tape to my desk. So I just did that over because I pretty much always have a silicone mat. Okay, so all the part that I do not want color on, I have masked off. But I also want a little bit of a white moon in the middle of what I'm going to attempt to do. Now this dude is really small. So I picked the smallest circle, like I picked this tiny little die. I think it will still work. The thing is I need to, I need to have some color outside of the, the guy, otherwise, the white will blend into the white that's around it, and then the bear will just look like it's got a hole in the side. So I'm gonna put that down a little bit. Okay, so this one, same thing. I just cut it out of the sticky note, and you can tell that the plates in my die cut machine are not very clean because the back of the sticky got all grungy. So I just cut it, and I cut it out of the part where the sticky was, so it's less likely to move, because basically the whole back of this is sticky now. So now that I've masked off, so I'm gonna have a white circle, because I don't want color there, and I don't want color here. So now we're just going to add a few things to our card to see how the masking works. So the other the other stamps that I'm using, for those who are curious, is from what month? Where can I get a cheat? Look at the box. This is from the October 2021 um, paper pumpkin kit, and I absolutely love it. This uh, this little thing of trees. Oh. It works so well and it, it coordinates with my cabin set, which is right there, but buried with a whole bunch of stamps on top of it. So they, these two uh, coordinate. So where the stamp set with the cabins are really big, this little one is perfect for insides and envelopes. And, and as it turns out, it's good to put a forest in a bear. Because how often do you need to put a forest in a bear? Well, when you do, you have this perfect stamp set. 
Okay, so I'm going to put a forest in a bear. I'm going to say that seven more times because it amuses me. Put a forest in a bear. Okay. Oh, look how clear that worked. I'm on a roll. Okay, so now I can't quite. Yeah, but maybe I can. Because I live on the edge. I'm picking the whole thing up. So now you can see as we're going. Oh, well, maybe you can't see. I can see that the trees are just in his feet, basically. I put the forest in the bear's feet. <laughs> yes, so you know, this having no filter, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I just, whatever pops in my head, I say it out loud. Um, yes, I amuse myself. <laughs> Hopefully I amuse at least one other person, but I, I amuse myself. Okay, so I have, I have a moon, I have trees. Um, I was gonna put, I was going to put stars, but now I realize I didn't really plan that out and I have no idea what color to make the stars. I need the stars to show up. So believe it or not, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to make the stars in black and see if that works. I'll stamp them off once so they're not super dark. These are not stars, snowflakes. I want white snowflakes, but I never thought to uh, heat emboss them and have that ready. So let's just see if this works because I'm going to sponge over top of it. So. One never knows. All right, I got some snowflakes in my forest with my bear. Now, now comes the risky part. No practice, let's just try <laughs> to make it nighttime. So the thing you need to remember with your mask though is this, is not, this mask is not glued down. The moon is, is pretty secure because it's got sticky all behind it. But the bear itself, and I can see that I shifted it a little bit when I lifted it up. Uh, living on the edge, okay. So it is not, uh, the, it's not super secure down here, especially this little piece in the middle. So what you wanna make sure you do is when you're gonna use your brush or your dauber or your sponge or whatever you're using, make sure you're not rubbing into the edge. Like don't go from the middle of the bear to the edge because the edge is just gonna lift. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Oops. The edge is just gonna lift up and you're gonna get ink outside of where you wanna go. Um, it's like painter's tape. When painter's tape works and you have that perfect straight edge and when it doesn't, you have that horrible fuzzy line. So what you wanna do, and I'm just using the brushes and it's and the, uh, the whole how to brush to do all that stuff, that would be another technique, but you're basically gonna start out off your paper and work into the middle. And it's very important when you're doing that with the masking, because like I said, you don't want to lift the edge up. You want the, you want the ink to go all the way to the edge of the, of the opening, but not push the opening over anywhere. So look at me go. This is working out better than I thought. <laughs> um, I'm my own cheerleader too, apparently. Uh, I'm trying to see how to, I, 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 it's such a habit to do circles, but I'm trying to get that little lippy thing. Oh, moved it, that's okay. All right, so I got back time. I'm not gonna make it super dark. It's just dusk, let's go with dusk. So we put a forest in a bear and we made it dusk. Woo, we're on a roll. Okay, and I'm gonna, now that I know, I'm trying to get in the habit of anything that has ink on it, leave it face up on my desk. So I quit setting stuff on it and getting ink everywhere. The fact that I got this far with clean hands, Amazing. Okay, washi tape. It's right up there in the same category as painter's tape. Um, it's not supposed to rip your paper, but I find that it does every time, which is one of the reasons I, yeah, see it just did, is one of the reasons I put this on a layer so that if I have to, I can cut this bear out or do something else if I need to because the, um, the, the tape has destroyed my little bit of cardstock or I'll put something over top of it. Um, I'm trying to bring this closer to the camera so you can see the big reveal. Woo, drama, drama. Okay, so there's our thing. Let's see how well we did. Woo um, I'm very stoked that worked out quite well. So there we go. Here's another tip for your masking. Now you can reuse this. And in this case, it's a bear. So, so maybe it's more obvious. Um, I did this with a circle once, which I tried to find earlier because somewhere I have a pre-cut circle. So I have one with a circle because it's very common to make a circle, make it yellow, stamp something on top of it. You probably see lots of Halloween cards that way. 
And it really doesn't matter if you're using a circle, if you use it this way, or if you use it this way. Or I guess even if you decided, perfect, now I'm gonna make the other one face the other direction. Make sure if you're using the same mask, do not flip it over unless you know for sure the ink is dry. Because I did that with the circle. I stamped one and I threw it off to the side. And when I picked it up, I picked it up the other way and I just laid it down. And I did all my nice inking and I had everything perfect and I lifted it up and there was ink transferred all around the other thing. So always keep your mask the same way up or make sure it's dry before you flip it. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so now I have, I actually have nails. But I don't, I'm not used to having nails, so it doesn't really work. Um, I need to just get underneath. There we go. Doo -doo. There's the moon. <laughs> Now, in hindsight, I should have made that moon smaller because there's not, I don't think there's enough clearance in there, but you get the gist. And because I ripped my paper here, but I really like how this turned out, I think I'm gonna punch a smaller moon and redo this and uh, not have this problem. But you see how we did two techniques there, right? So we kept all of this white, we kept the moon white, and we kept all of the trees and snowflakes at night sky inside the bear. Oh. Ta -da! I need to get one of those uh, sound boards like Rosie O'Donnell had. Is that is that dating myself when I talk about the Rosie O'Donnell? She had a little sound effects board where she could push all sorts of things and she had applause and cheering and sound effects and I feel like I need one of those. Why? Because it will help me amuse myself. Okay, um, I'm really quite I'm really quite happy with how that bear turned out and uh, I'm gonna I part of me wanted to try. And make northern lights over the trees but I realized how how much technique is involved in northern lights so I think we'll save the northern lights technique for when I decide to do a um a uh, video on sponging and such but other than the fact that like I said this moon is too big it actually worked out quite well the snowflakes are showing through um so you can see that we're talking about like a nice little forest at night with the snowflakes so happy with that one okay What's next on my list? Festive foliage. Now, one of the reasons doing the, uh, when I was doing my sentiment stamp, my fantabulistic label, that I could not use my stamp right as far as it was because I already had it set up for something else. Let me move some stuff out of the way. So here's another little masking technique for you. What am I doing on time? Oh, I might even be on time. Okay, <laughs> everything's stuck together. So I had this set up because really, if you're using a big background stamp, you want the Stamparatus. And even, I have two Stamparatuses, Stamparat I. I don't know if that's Stamparat I. Um, only I can't find one of them. So for now I'm working with one and I had already preset it up for this. So here's another one where you can get a really cool effect very quickly. This is this beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, background stamp called Vested Foliage. And as you, if you watched my other one when I did the stamp Stamparatus example, again, I can see the card, but it is too hard to risk grabbing it without knocking my, everything off the piles and piles around me. Um, it's such a pretty stamp, I didn't want to cover it up. But you need to be able to put a sentiment somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave a spot for the sentiment on this one. So, and this works with, it doesn't have to be a background stamp. It could be a bunch of multiple stamps. It could be just a bigger image stamp. I'm sure you could do it with all sorts of things. So because this is how I roll, I'm just eyeballing where the center of that card is. And again, this is a piece of sticky. It's the top piece. So it has the, uh, the adhesive behind it, so it should stay in place. And because this background stamp is so big, um, there's not actually room for my magnets. So even though I just knocked that again, I'm hoping to ink it up well enough that I only have to do it once. But if not, I'm making sure that I put this where I can line it back up again if I really had to. But I'm hoping for the best. So there it goes. And then as we learned at our, because we are so lucky to be part of, oh, bye, Tamara. Have a good night. I was just going to say, because we're so lucky to be part of Tamara's team. Um, we have connections and we got to go to the Silver Sisters. And the one day when we were doing that and they were saying, instead of using your hand, because your hand sticks on this plastic and it like, you know, will stutter, dry erase marker, or sorry, dry erase board eraser. <laughs> um, 
this works so much better to do this to rub on the stamp than it is to use your hand. So we have there you go. Just full of tips tonight. Oh, look at that. First try. So now what we ended up with was that same awesome background stamp with a space in the middle. And so now instead of covering up all that awesomeness, uh, and I realize that the awesomeness is not there, but somehow it feels better that I'm not covering it up because it was never there to begin with. Um, so now I can stamp in, in that little void. I've just made room. I thought I had this set up, but I didn't. Uh, that is totally not the right size block for that. Uh, there is another while I'm, while I'm prepping my stamp, which I thought I had set up. Here's another stamp set you have to have, this Heartfelt Wishes. Makes the most awesome, awesome uh, sentiments. It's such a pretty font. And in this case, it will go end to end on my card. Again, just eyeballing it. I'll find much, much, uh, whew, because somehow through the magic of uh, Facebook Live, I seem to manage to get everything in the middle where I want. So, ta -da! it just leaves a void so you can put something in the middle. Now, yes, you could. You could um, stamp the whole thing and put a strip over top. But if you're trying to, again, keep to the single layer, if you were doing this on a note card or something and you just wanted a simple card and you wanted just easy stamping, that's the easiest way to do it. And it does not have to be like a straight line like that. You could have it the shape of a sentiment. I knew, I knew how long this thing was. And even with my piece of paper, I see now, um, I didn't pick quite a long enough piece of sticky because I got two tiny little marks there and one little mark there. So I should have put just a little bit longer or centered my card a little better. Um, but I wanted, I knew how long this sentiment was and I didn't want a big chunk of paper on it. So I wanted this instead. And you know what, in all honesty, even though I am trying to keep it simple, um, I won't, I will likely put like a little bit of greenery on it or something. This is too big. It's also stuck together. There we go. I will likely put like a little bit of greenery on it and maybe a, this is, this is the beauty of not putting stuff away. You have all sorts of things on your desk. So I will likely put like a little sprig or something on it just to give it a little zhush. But for the most part, boom, one layer, simple stamping works. Now, as with the rest of it, um, I got one more technique to show you. Uh, in case you're wondering, oh my God, is this ever gonna end? Um, in, in most cases, like I said, you're either trying to keep something or eliminate something when you're masking. So in this case, we eliminated the middle. This next masking, it's all gonna be about keeping what's in the middle. The middle is the star. Okay, where did I just grab this from? Sorry, I have somehow screwed up my system and I have, I have no way. I'm scared to get up during a live because I know how dainty I am. <laughs> I know that I will just knock everything everywhere and it will all go crashing. So I don't wanna do that. So I, I try to make it so I have just enough room to have files all around my desk. Okay, next one up. Now this, this I've seen lots of cards coming up with this in the fall theme. So I decided, well, I'll just make a Christmas themed one. Um, but this, this technique and this, the, the effect that you get with this, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so I have a piece of scrap paper down and here's my layer that I'm gonna use to put the cards on. Now, I'm trying to, what I'm gonna do is mask off everything but the middle. So I wanna to try to be somewhat even with my masks. So my masks are two sticky notes. And all I did was tear, just, I'll do this one. I just did like this. And I just kind of wiggled as I went because I wanted a rougher edge. Now, of course, now I'm trying to show you that I have it almost straight edge there, but until the end, but it's whatever pattern you want, right? So I just wanted waiting. So what I wanna do is I wanna keep about this much of this card open. So good paper could be your friend because I can tell from here that if I have, I'm uh, one, two, three, four, five squares from the end there, one, two, three, four, five squares. If I shift this up just a little bit, now I know that if I cover five squares worth of card, I'm gonna be pretty close. See, and in this case, the layer is just the right size that the sticky is completely covering it end to end. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I uh, I just ripped the sticky note and I'm gonna go two, three, four, five. 
I'm going to go five. Now it's not the end of the world, especially because what I intend to do with this card is to stamp a sentiment down here. So if I haven't lined this up, because really you could you could measure, but when do you touch it to swing it? Um, then you can just pick whichever way you, you think is going to look better and put the sentiment on so that it looks like you intentionally put it off center. But in this case, we should probably be pretty close. So I am now using, what am I using? I'm looking at the, uh, at the French saying and trying to figure out what I picked up. I'm pretty sure that I picked up balmy blue. Balmy blue it is. So I have balmy, and this randomly, I'm doing a snowflake card. So I wanted snowflakey colors, wintry colors. So I, I picked some blues. So I have midnight, what is it? Why am I forgetting the name of everything tonight? Misty moonlight. Pacific Point and Balmy Blue. And I've masked off the parts that I want to keep white. And now I'm focusing all on here. So this was the one I used earlier. That color. I'll just try to keep my brushes in this in the right color. So again, that's a whole other lesson, but when it comes to brushing, start with the light. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to again trying to keep away. Now, in this case, where I ripped the edges, they're sticky all along them. So these ones are gonna stick down way better. Um, I knew how much brushing was gonna be going on here, but these ones are gonna stick down way better uh, than the, the one that I cut out of just the, the yellow notepad because it didn't have any adhesive at all on it. This balmy blue is not showing up very well. I should have done more of this so it wouldn't take so long to watch. Um, but yeah, so this time I'm, I can go up a bit against the edge a little bit more. I probably could go right at, yeah. Because I like to live on the edge, I'm going to do exactly what I told you not to do. Um, because this is stuck down so well, it, it, it's actually working out pretty good. Okay, my balmy blue is not showing up very well. But in the interest of time, I'll just skip to the darker one and have, you'll get, you'll get the gist. Oops, I did that again. You know, I do that every time I'm brushing. I, I, I purposely have to start on this side and work my way in. And every single time, I use these brushes. I will start right in the middle and I will every time. <laughs> now, sometimes you can blend it out. Sometimes you can cover it with a snowflake. <laughs> um, but I do it, I do it all the time. I, I know better and I do it anyways. In this case, I'm gonna use the excuse that it's because I'm rushing. Okay, move that out of the way so I don't knock it. So all I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get some colors just to give you guys the idea of what I'm what I was going for. And I'm trying to get of a night sky look, a little bit, a little bit mottled blue. Um, have any of you guys, see if anybody's making comments, um, been watching the, like for the Aurora Borealis? I lived up north for many, many years and I saw them all the time and they never get old. I used to like be walking the dog and the number of times I would see them and oh my God, it was amazing. But I guess I never really thought about it, but my son had never seen them. And then the other night, somebody posted, well, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, had posted about them. And so we went and stood out on our back deck and, uh, and watched them. And oh my goodness, it was, they were just gorgeous. Um, and he, had, he was so excited about them. So now we're watching for them. So lots, lots of attention on the night skies lately. Okay, I did a horrible job of brushing on this one because I'm really not paying enough attention. Um, and I got some, I kept doing that with my brush. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to hide it because the the point I'm trying to make will still come through. Um, and next time I will, when I show you my finished card, I will have paid attention to it and done a much better job of brushing. But the last time when I did this, I went an hour and a half, <laughs> and I was really trying to stay half an hour to an hour tops. So I'm, I'm going a little faster today. There's probably all sorts. I was going to make all sorts of other samples and stuff like that too, but then I thought, nope. Time is of the essence. I just gotta, here's the thing with a lot of techniques. What you really need is somebody to show you what the technique is and the basics of how to do it. And uh, one of the best things you'll get is tips from somebody on what not to do. So what not to do, don't set your brush down in the middle of your card because that just really does not work. Oops, now that I just did it again, if I can brush that up. Okay, so I'm now going to, I need my other color. Um, but yeah, then, then the trick is practice. Use some scrap paper. I, you know, it is better to practice actual techniques 
on cardstock because cardstock does take ink differently than copy paper and stuff like that. Uh, this is just night of ink. So you do want to practice on the right thing, but you know, sacrifice a piece of white cardstock and do a whole bunch of practice and trial and error and see what works for you and see what you like and, um, and then do it. Because it is, it, when you see some, okay, so in, in my case, not me, because my example of, of brushing, <laughs> totally or horrible looking, but sometimes you'll see somebody who's done this so many times or they'll show a card that they've already finished where they did it like off camera and it was like slow and steady and they did a perfect job of it. Um, don't expect that your first time is going to be that easy. I mean, if it is, you know, kudos, well done. But that's not generally the case. So, yeah, take the techniques, take them back, practice a little bit, and then start making your cards with them. And the more you make, the easier it gets. So now, while the stuff is still down, I am going to. Oh, that is definitely not the right snowflake. That was a very big snowflake. Um, I'm going to stamp a couple snowflakes. I've got three different snowflakes that are three different sizes. And because I'm thinking now that that is just way too dark, I should have stamped off some of the other ones. I can stamp these ones off. But I'm just trying to get a little variety in my, in my snowflakes. Oh, that's not the one I want. I just, I just need a little, I feel like, I feel like we need just a little switch right there. So now again, the big reveal. <laughs> um, this card is the, or the center of the card is the star of the show. Just a minute before I drop everything in ink again. So even with my horrible spongy job, um, the effect is still so cool. <laughs> Ta -da, when you take off your masks and you're left with your cool strip in the middle. Ooh, I love it. So yeah, this is, and then it's whatever you want to do. I'm going to cut out um, again. <laughs> There's so many good products in the in the holiday catalog this year. This is called Mary, Mary Snowflakes. Um, the stamp set, the, the, the stamp or the dies would be called something similar, but honestly, I cannot remember. But I think they're called Stitch Snowflakes actually, but they have stitching on them and they are beautiful they make the prettiest snowflakes with that little bit of stitching on them jen you do I, it's been on the demo page a lot lately i've seen a lot of fall cards with leaves and stuff um but it is just so cool and again it's just like a simple one layer card and then i'm going to uh, cut out a couple snowflakes well i don't actually know until i actually start cutting them out um and then just i like dimensional so i'll have a couple snowflakes dimensional on there Put a little sentiment on there, pop it up. I might put another layer underneath, one never knows. And uh, and there you go. But the the look of like the, the tearaway revealing this, you know, snowy night sky, it's just cool. <laughs> not my not my original idea, but just cool. But yeah, all the ones I had seen recently were were fall colors and leaves. So I thought, no, nope, I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try snowflakes. So there you go. Look what I did. <laughs> I have stuff all over the desk. Let's see if I can find it all again. So we've got masking the middle to make it the focus, masking the middle off so that it's blank. Uh, my personal favorite, chicken party. <laughs> um, ooh, a close second though, and only because I made the moon the wrong size, is that bear, which I'm really liking. Uh, somewhere I have a cabin, but honestly, I have no idea what I did with it. All right, there you go, somewhere there's a cabin. Well, it's really odd. Anyways, have a play. <laughs> oh, look, because I use the same things, it looks like I had like a coordinated effort there. Um, so go have your own masking party. Do, do, do. See how I tied that in there? And uh, yeah, trial and error, man. Have some fun. Remember to uh, work out in so you're not hitting the edges of your mask too much. And just go to town, pick a shape, try it, and uh, see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me, everybody, tonight. I hope you have a great Thursday, what's left of it. And uh, Merrick has fall break next week. And I have, after hockey on Saturday, of course, six full days of not having set the alarm. So I'm very excited about that. And next week is 
on stage, which is our, our annual convention for demonstrators. And I am so excited about it. It's virtual. It's not in person yet, uh, but I am still so excited about it. So I will have more details um, and happenings during that. And I will post some more information on the, uh, the starter kit, because again, you get almost $300 worth of stuff. At, and at least 200 of that is just straight stamping product um, for a hundred bucks. I mean, you can't go wrong there. So we will talk to you. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Jen. Um, we will talk to you guys uh, next week. Enjoy your weekend. Bye, everybody.